this is a really a difficult video to make for me. I have to confess something that I haven't told you guys for a long time. Um, that is that I'm a feminist. Holy shit, you're a feminist? Okay, so you like basically hate men, right? Okay, that was just something silly. Hi guys, my name is Sabine and welcome to another video. Today I will be talking to you guys about my favorite feminist reads. I just wanted to make like a stupid intro thing because whenever I say that I'm a feminist or like in general when people say that they are a feminist, others always look at them like, the feminist, you hate man, you want women to be better than man. People are always so scared of the term feminism, feminist, it just scares them off. And for that reason, I just want to clarify the term feminism or feminist. I found a definition on Wikipedia and Wikipedia is not the most like trustworthy source on the internet, let me tell you that, but I really quite agree with this definition of feminism. So feminism, its common goal to define, establish, and achieve the political, economic, personal, and social equality of the sexes. Do, do you guys hear the word? a quality. It's not being better or, you know, whatever. It's about a quality of the sexes. That is basically what feminism wants to achieve. So yes, I am a feminist and not only females can be a feminist, also when you're a male and you just want equality for females and males, then you're a feminist. And whether you like that term or not, that's what you are. Be proud of it because why wouldn't you want to be a feminist? Why wouldn't you want equality of the sexes? With that being said, I have a couple of recommendations about like, like books that I have read which either have like some kind of element of feminism in it or they are about feminism like it's their main topic it's the main driving thing for the plot I have a couple of honorable mentions but I also have like feminist YA books where feminism is the plot where it's the thing that's driving the story like I said but my honorable mentions are more like books that had like a really nice feminist quote or that had some kind of I don't know they just had something that made me feel like yes this author is a supporter for feminism so let's start with my honorable mentions I have two of them right here that I recently read and that I found had some amazing quotes in them which resemble feminism I'm also really excited to share these honorable mentions because they are both books written by male authors to show you that it's not only, you know, feminism is not only reduced to be something for only females, males can be feminists too. So let's start off with my first honorable mention, which is Aristotle and Dante Discover the Secrets of the Universe by Benjamin Alir Science. He, Science? He's, I don't know how to pronounce his name. He's a Mexican American author, and this book is a YA LGBTQ plus contemporary read about Aristotle and Dante and how they become friends and how they kind of deal with their feelings for each other. And I had a couple of nice quotes, but I just want to show you guys one in particular. I have to look it up on my phone because I kept notes while I've read these books so I do know kind of where the quotes are but I just have to find it. So we follow our main character Aristotle, Ari, and this is what he encounters. The swimming instructors who called themselves lifeguards sucked. They weren't at all interested in teaching a skinny 15 year old punk how to swim. They were pretty much interested in girls that had suddenly sprouted breasts. They were obsessed with breasts. That's the truth. I heard one of the lifeguards talking to one of the other lifeguards as he was supposed to be watching a group of little kids. A girl is like a tree covered with leaves. You just want to climb up and tear all those leaves off. The other guy laughed. <laughs> You're an asshole, he said. Nah, I'm a poet, he said. A poet of the body. And then they both busted out laughing. Yeah, sure, they were budding Walt Whitmans, the two of them. See, the thing about guys is that I didn't really care to be around them. I mean, guys really make me uncomfortable. I don't know why, not exactly. I just, I don't know, I just didn't belong. I think it embarrassed the hell out of me that I was a guy. And it really depressed me that there was the distinct possibility that I was going to grow up and be like one of those assholes. A girl is like a tree. Yeah, and a guy's about as smart as a piece of dead wood infested with termites. <sighs> My mom would have said that they were just going through a face. Pretty soon, they would get their brains back. Sure they would. It shows that these two lifeguards were just talking about their girls and their bodies and their girls were like trees and you just want to like grab all the leaves off, like you just want to pull off every girl's clothes. And Ari is just like, 
what the hell who are these douchebags girls are like trees and you guys are so freaking dumb it just made me feel really great that a guy would think like that and wouldn't be like those assholes every guy should just think like Ari that would just be incredible that would just be amazing the other like honorable mention that I have is the perks of being a wallflower by Stephen Shabosky again another male author and there was this amazing passage which I also want to share it's just that a lot of these feminist YA books that I have have amazing quotes in them that just mean to be shared because they are so important. So on page 125, if I can find it, Charlie, our main character, is a 15-year-old boy and he writes everything in his like diary. We follow his life when he goes to freshman year in high school and he starts making friends but he also has like mental health issues kind of and he writes his whole story down in like a diary form and this one passage in his diary I really enjoyed reading about that someone is becoming aware of this. I believe that this book was even out in like 1999, maybe even earlier. So more people shared this train of thought, it would have been even earlier that feminism would be on the rise. It was all the magazine covers. Each one had a smiling face. And every time it was a woman on the cover, she was showing her cleavage. I wondered if those women wanted to do that to look pretty or if it was just part of the job. I wondered if they had a choice or not, if they wanted to be successful. I just couldn't get that thought out of my mind. And this just really blew my mind, kind of like, I really loved that this was in the book. This author just showed that he had an amazing way of thinking. Even back then already, back in like the 90s, like, oh man, women need to show off, especially their breasts, like quite a lot. Like, do they even like that? Do they even want that? Or do they need to in order to be, you know, seen in the media? It's still something that's going on today and there's still coming a little bit of change because of all of the awareness these days. But yeah, awareness still needs to be spread around. Great, great book, by the way. Okay, so after my honorable mentions, I just wanted to talk about YA books that really had feminism as kind of their main driving point. I have one fantasy that I wanted to mention and three contemporary books, so let's start with the fantasy one because I don't really see a lot of feminist fantasy books. And that one is Grace and Fury by Tracy Banghart. This is, like I said, a YA fantasy book. It's basically about two sisters who have two very different fates. One has to be on a island, like a prison island, and the other one was trained to become a grace, to become sort of like a showing object, which would be next to the heir of the throne, to be seen as like the perfect woman. Something happens, the story gets really quite interesting, and there is like betrayal lurking around the corner. I very much enjoy the story. I don't know if I'm gonna pick up the sequel because even though I did really enjoy it, I don't know if I'm still like super invested in the story, but I did really enjoy the camaraderie between women. But I also really loved how Tracy Banghart showed the betrayal of like how women should be versus what we want to be and why should we want to be a certain way. Plus it was a fantasy, it was in like a different setting, kind of a different world, sort of Italian vibe. So if you want to have something that's a little bit different but still has feminism in it, I would definitely go for Grace and Fury. I'm going in the order that I really like them. So on my number three, I have Moxie. Oh my God, what is the author's name again? The author's name is Jennifer Matthews. So Moxie is my number three. In this story, we follow Vivian and Vivian is so done with how everything is going, especially in school. The guys are jerks to everyone and also especially girls. So she decides to create this feminist magazine. I don't know what it was called again. It had a special name. She calls this a zine, a magazine, a feminist magazine that she starts spreading through the school and she starts making more friends and it starts to kind of blow up. I love to see Vivian's movement. And one thing that I really loved is our love in interest is a feminist too. Yes, hallelujah, thank God. <laughs> I loved the love interest and just the whole story in general and it's a really powerful book about feminist movements and especially for young girls in high school. Then on my number two I have a recent read. I absolutely love this book and this author also has a lot more like feminist YA books, not only this one, and that is Am I Normal Yet by Holly Bourne. In this book we follow Evie but she has been um, diagnosed and treated for OCD. The book's focus is also mainly on like her mental health and her going to college to a new school and her wanting to be seen as 
normal as possible. She makes two amazing friends, Lottie and Amber, and they form this really great friend group. So they discuss a feminist topic, I believe, every single week, and it's really interesting to listen to that. And I learned a new term, which I want to to know about as well because I don't know if a lot of people know this term, especially also feminists. I didn't know about this until I read this book. So the term is called benevolent sexism. If I'm saying that correctly, English is not my mother tongue, so don't you know, don't hate on me. Okay, for a little bit of context. Okay, Lottie pushed a bit of hair off her face. So we all know about blatant sexism. It's stuff like when boys say, girls should stay in the home, or you can't play football, or you're a dirty whore who has to let me do all this weird sex stuff on you because I watch too much porn and please don't tell me about your thoughts because you exist only as a sex object. That's blatant sexism, isn't it? It's obvious, okay? Okay? I said, smiling. But I was reading about this thing on my phone called benevolent sexism. It's like undercover sexism, hidden sexism, and both boys and girls are guilty of it. The thing is, we don't think we're being sexist when we do it, which makes it even more dangerous. Sexist how? Amber asked. What sexist thoughts and actions do we all unknowingly do? It's how we think about the sexes that's wrong. Lottie said, turning another page on her clipboard. We believe that men and women are inherently different. So like, women are meeker and need a bit more looking after than blokes. Don't know what blokes are, but okay. <laughs> Let's continue. And we're kinder and more fragile and that's our biology and we can't help it. Lots of us think that, but that's benevolent sexism. Because actually, those kinds of attitudes can really pull us down. Just say we all get high-flying jobs when we grow up. If Evie's boss openly said in a meeting, Oh, Evie, you can't get that promotion because you're not as smart as men. Well, then you could sue his arse for sexism and everyone would agree with you. Ah, <sighs> Lottie took a deep breath. <laughs> but if you were up for promotion, but the process involved being really pushy and, well, if you were too embarrassed to do that in case they thought you were a butch or a bitch or unfeminine, so you just smiled nicely instead and then didn't get the promotion, that's Benefoil and sexism holding you back. You thought because you're female, you shouldn't behave a certain male way. See? It's hidden. Women are just as sexist, even though it makes their lives worse. That is Benefoil and sexism. I have never heard of this before I read the book, but it is a situation that you can really imagine happening. I believe this shit goes on every single day and to have someone, you know, show it to you through this story made me really see something which I didn't notice before and makes me think about it like so much more. This book in general, amazing, read it. It's just so incredibly good. It also tells you about like self-worth and that you do not need a guy for that or a girl for that matter. Just that you do not need anyone else to be your best self. Okay, and now my favorite feminist YA read of all time. This is a duology. You do not need to read the second book, but I would still highly recommended because it's almost just as good, almost just as hilarious as the first one, and that is The Exact Opposite of Okay by Laura Steven. Oh my god, this is my favorite book, I think of all time to be honest, like of all the books that I've read, this is my favorite because it deals with, first of all, such an important topic. The writing is amazing. I love the characters so incredibly much, but, but, but it is, oh my god, it is so funny. Like, I never laugh out loud with books. I don't know, it's just something that doesn't happen. But with these two books, I also have A Girl Called Shameless, which is the sequel. With these two books, I laughed out loud so many times. It's absolutely insane. I don't know how Laura Stephen does this, but she is a genius. She's so fucking funny. I'm gonna say the fuck word because it's just so true. We follow Izzy in this book and she has slept with two guides in one night. Like, oh my god, Izzy, why would you do that? You're such a slut. <laughs> no. That's not the case. The exact opposite of that. Did you see what I did there, huh? Huh? Okay, I'm gonna stop. <laughs> she sleeps with two guys in one night and one of these instances gets photographed and shared on this website. So this website is online with all these pictures of Izzy having sex with a guy. She gets slut shamed, she gets called names. It's like, oh my God, everything is going on. And we follow her with dealing with this stuff, but also finding out who made this website. I've recommended these books to so 
many people and I believe that over five of those people have bought them and love them. This is just an insanely amazing book because it's funny but it deals with such an important topic. I just loved it. I just loved it. I cannot say anything else but promising things and good things about it and if you don't like these books then sure that's fine everyone can have their own opinion but I do wonder like are you even alive? Do you even exist? Are you a normal human being? <laughs> no just kidding but I just want you guys to know that this is the best book ever. <laughs> so these were all of my female feminist, not female, my feminist YA reads which I want you all to read if you're interested in feminism. And you should be, you should. <laughs> because it's just all about making this world one big equal loving planet, yes. <laughs> if you guys enjoyed this video please give it a thumbs up and you can subscribe to my channel by clicking somewhere here on the screen or on the button down below. Let me know in the comments if you have read any of these books plus if you also have more feminist recommendations because I did notice when I like put this pile together that I was like, man, I definitely still need to read more feminist books. You guys can also follow me on all of my different social media pages. Because I'm a booktuber, of course I have Goodreads, but I also have Snapchat, Instagram, plus an email address. Links to those are also in the description bar down below. Thank you so much for watching this video and I hope that I will see you guys in the next one. Bye!